Well, in this unit of study, energetics, we need to bring up some of the science, technology, and society issues. And boy, are there some issues here. So, science, technology, society issues for things like fossil fuel combustion. Because really, what we're talking about a lot of times here is energetics that's involved in the combustion of materials like fossil fuels. Okay, now, um, what's the good thing about fossil fuels? They're ubiquitous. That means that they're everywhere. And there's no doubt about it, no matter what anybody tells you, the burning of fossil fuels is cheap. It doesn't require a heck of a lot of, of, of money and, and time spent energy-wise to be able to liberate from the ground that resource to be able to combust it for either heat or it, to produce electricity from that heat. Remember, we take um, water, essentially, and we boil it from the heat from a fossil fuel, drive it through pipes, which turn fan blades, which then turn generators and make electricity, right? So the thing is, fossil fuel combustion, it's cheap, it's effective, um, there's fossil fuel everywhere in the form of coal, oil, and natural gas. The problem is that that coal, oil, and natural gas doesn't just have carbon in it and hydrogen in it, hydrocarbon, but it's got sulfur in it, which is terrible for the environment because when the sulfur actually is liberated from that fossil fuel as sulfur dioxides and trioxides, they go up into the atmosphere and come down as acidic deposition when they react with water, like H2SO4 and H2SO3, sulfuric and sulfurous acid. Bad, bad stuff for the environment because it changes the pH of soil and rivers, and so the plants and animals that live in those conditions have the pH of their environments changed. Not good for reproductive purposes. So the thing is, fossil fuel combustion has its problems, but we try as society, as people in society, to be able to reduce the amount of sulfur that we put into the atmosphere by taking out that sulfur. In terms of natural gas, what we do is we, uh, we strip out the sulfur in various refining uh, reactions and pretty much almost take out about 99.9% .9 of the sulfur that's involved. Right. And what else do we do? Uh, well, we can actually take sulfur out of coal, but that's an expensive process and a lot of times um, that actually makes the fossil fuel that we're trying to sell for combustion purposes a little bit more expensive. So, here's the deal. Fossil fuel combustion does liberate sulfur uh, and that's not necessarily good for the environment, right? Okay. Uh, oh, and by the way, you know our car engines, well, when we put gasoline into them, when they burn really hot, nitrogen from the air, which is what we need for, well, <laughs> Air was what we need in, the, in, a, in, a, in a car engine to be able to undergo combustion, right? So octane plus O2 makes CO2 plus H2O. If you're burning that fossil fuel octane in your car and you're burning it 100% completely. The problem is though, that nitrogen from the atmosphere also gets sucked into the car engine along with the oxygen. And you can actually take that nitrogen, that triple bonded nitrogen molecule, break it apart and make NO2 and NO3, just called NOx, and they can rise up into the air and come down as nitrous and nitric acid. That's acidic deposition too. So hot burning car engines are bad for the environment. That's all fossil fuel combustion. So that's a problem with fossil fuel combustion. There are pros and cons to be able, uh, being able to utilize that as a fuel source on this planet to make electricity and heat. Nuclear power? Well, of course, nuclear power um, is just energy that's derived from taking elements like, but by the way, nuclear power on the sun, hydrogen uh, as in the form of tritium and deuterium, those two isotopes of hydrogen ram into each other on the sun and they make helium, but they also produce a lot of energy and nuclear reaction is taking elements and, well, if you take smaller elements and ram, ram, ramming them together to make bigger elements like helium from hydrogen, that's called nuclear fusion. That's highly exothermic because you're mess messing with uh, the strong force of the nucleus, first of all, that has to be broken in order to combine those elements or break them apart. But really what's happening is matter is being turned into energy. And that's Einstein stuff, E equals mc squared, where a little bit of mass turns into a heck of a lot of energy. So the thing is, whether it's a fusion reaction or take uranium like we do on this planet, in nuclear reactors and we make it undergo fission to be able to make smaller elements, nuclear fission, that's also highly exothermic. And so because you're actually taking matter and turning it into energy again. 
oh my, that type of reaction right there is very, very powerful in terms of the amount of energy that comes off. Problem is, of course, nuclear waste, which is highly radioactive. Um, and we have to find places to store all of that. And just shooting it up into space is a crazy idea, actually. And, 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 but burying it in, in mountains and stuff uh, like that, or in, in desert places, well, will that nuclear uh, uh, waste, which is radioactive, get into the aquifer and contaminate water supplies? Well, there's possibilities of that happening. So that has its pros and its cons. A little bit of nuclear material, like uranium, goes a long way. So it's very efficient. But the problem is, it's the waste that comes off. Best to be able to start thinking about renewable sources like wind and solar and hydro, tidal and geothermal energies. Because all of these guys here being renewable resources are excellent ways to be able to produce electricity for the planet. Solar from solar panels, wind, we're spinning turbines, right? To make electricity, hydro, water coming off of dams, tidal energy, the tide's going in and out every day. If we can find a way to prevent the corrosion of the materials that are going to be used to be able to extract that energy, man, that's an efficient form of energy. It'd be fantastic. Geothermal, like in Iceland, you know, all the heat coming out of the ground can actually be used to be able to spin those turbines and produce electricity. There are some real good ways of being able to make electricity. Maybe not as good, but right now, as good but right now, a cheap alternative.